Welcome to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Hello and good evening. Welcome to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. It's a really chilled show tonight. Look, we're having a beer we're on the sofa. I haven't got the ironing board out for once. I'm just chilling tonight. I'm having a good time. No more ironing board. Um, right, cop to bottom. Thank you for joining us. I have uh, the one and only Doyla. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> and I have the one and only kid from the cop. Well for TV, Hi, okay, Finn. How are we, the fan? Good, good, yeah. Very, very good. Good. Right, today we will, tonight, sorry, we will be previewing five games in the Premier League this weekend. The five games that we believe to be the juiciest. Southampton, Chelsea, Liverpool, Everton, West Ham, Tottenham, Arsenal, Man City, Aston Villa and Leicester. Um, if you are with us right now, please do let us know in the comments. But also, don't forget to drive the uh, the attention to, to this video and, and like it. Give it a comment uh, and subscribe, please, if you haven't already. Cameron, straight away, straight off the bat, triple threat. And that's what we're dealing with tonight. Three mm-hmm. very knowledgeable um, Scousers. Well, I mean, two full Scousers and a 51 percenter. <laughs> um, I think that's 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 fair. Um, I am also moving to Liverpool. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do like a proper announcement video about that. But yeah, in July, I will be in Liverpool. So that's great as well. But anyway, how are we, Doyle? Let's let's go to you first. I mean, we'll quickly touch on on the last game. I know you weren't uh, on the um, post match reaction show for that, or you you dipped out of it. I think um, things have to change. I mean, obviously it's a derby. Form does go out the window, but our form says that we've lost our last three games, and it has to change. It yeah. has to change tomorrow. When was the last time they beat us at Anfield? 1999, mm-hmm. Kevin Campbell was the goal scorer that night. And was Gerard you born? And was you Sander Westerveld got sent off. No. I was born in 94. That's, that's how long ago they haven't beat us there. And like, I know we've lost three times. Like We have lost three times there. But I just don't see them coming and making a big show of it. I just don't. Maybe they'll give us a game, but I can see us bouncing back. I really can. That's what we've been doing. We haven't having two good games and then I run a crap ones. Yeah. So this is the second of a good of the good games. I'd, we can just see it like yeah. that. I, I don't know if we're gonna win or not, but the way we played on Tuesday against the who was it? Leipzig. Leipzig. They, we were boss lads. So if we can just we do that well. again, hopefully we can just do that again, lad. That would just be nice. But going into it, it would it, be it's, nice. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it. No, I'm not. But they okay, just got well, smoked by like, uh, They did. We will um, uh, get into the full preview later on, but the first game of the weekend is actually not the Liverpool game. That's a 5.30 at Southampton, Chelsea. Um, so let's look at this yeah. one first, lads. I'll get it up here. In terms of the form table, I mean, both of these teams have had very up and down seasons, it's fair to say. Southampton have lost five in a row since they beat us. This is just Liverpool's luck. Yeah. We, we lose to a team and then they lose about 10 games in a row. Um, I mean, they're on awful form right now, to be honest with you. They've lost 10 games, uh, only won eight. So that all of a sudden, that amazing start um, is kind of lopsided a bit. Um, and um, as we can see, they're playing Chelsea, who have won their last four and drawn one in five. Uh, they're the hot ticket right now, apart from Man City, probably the second best form team in the league. Early kickoff at St Mary's Finn. Um, how do you see this one going? Uh, yeah, Southampton was so good when they like the start of the season. They were, like top at one point. Uh, I remember I was away. They were, like top of the league, and there's all like saying cancel the league and that. And they were so good, and it was just like a challenging game to play Southampton. But ever since like since we got beat by them, they've been so poor, and like they took the leads in some games and they bottled them. And yeah, it's very disappointing to see. And obviously that big heavy defeat nine nil to United, another nine nil defeat. It's obviously a shame to see for them, but I don't know what's up with them. I think they just need to get a bit of rhythm back, and obviously, a winning Chelsea could do that. And it's, it wouldn't be surprising if Southampton did manage to pull three points. But for me, I, I've got to back Chelsea. Thomas Douglas came in and done very, very well with them, conceded barely any goals. Um, so I'll go 2 0 Chelsea, but I feel for Southampton because they had a great start to the season. And I think they just couldn't keep the momentum going, couldn't keep the energy levels high. Um, but I hope they bounce back, and I think they will do when they get three or four runner games, which are a bit beatable. and I reckon they'll come back to the top and hopefully be challenging for Europe. Yeah, um, in the comments here, Doyle, 3-1 Chelsea says, Ian. What's your score prediction for this one? 
Uh, probably something similar. I'd probably see like a 2 1. Or maybe, do you know what? Southampton need to bounce back themselves and they had a good team. Tusco doesn't know nothing about Southampton, lad, and they do come with some kind of tactic and some kind of style. So maybe he's just thinking, if I just go there and then do this and do that, like standard things that I'll do well. And I don't think Southampton are that type of team. Like, you have to play football against Southampton to win the game. Otherwise, they'll just take the game to you. So hopefully, it's something like a 2 2. I'd like to see like a little 2 2. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say 2 2. two. Lad. Well, if Chelsea do win this one, they go 45 points in fourth. If we win. On Saturday, we go up to 43. So, for us, really, they're the team to catch at the minute, unfortunately. Go with a slim 2-1 win, Chelsea. I reckon it will be a little bit too much. They're on this new manager bounce. And I think it would just be about um, too much to handle for Southampton. Cameron's going for a one-all draw. Let us know in the comments. With all the games that we're previewing tonight, whilst you're just chilling at home, kicking back, relaxing, this isn't the formal show tonight. We're all just having fun, aren't we, guys? Um, but let's get into the next one, which is in chronological order. This one, Liverpool versus yes, Everton. Uh... Ooh, let us know straight off the bat what your score predictions are for this one. Um, we Do will one. get into a lineup prediction as well. No, not not you, mate. In the comments, not you, mate. Yeah, bloody hell, you just ruined it. Uh, cheers, mate. Um, Let's get into this one then. In terms of form, I mean, Everton, after again such a promising start to the season, only one win in five. They lost their last game to Fulham. Um, and then, no, sorry, to Man City. Uh, and then obviously, we're, we're just one place ahead um, in six. They are seventh. We've lost our last three games. So, in terms of uh, form, it's us really in Southampton, maybe Tottenham, who are in this horrible run that we need to get out of desperately. Um, I'm confident though, boys. I think as as you both kind of heard on the channel in the week, we all kind of agreed that the Leipzig game was a new start. It was a point where we draw a line in the sand, everyone kisses and makes up. Not literally, because you can't social distance doing that. But I do feel like this is a new beginning almost. And if we can pull off a win on you know the weekend against our bitter rivals when they really come in to Anfield thinking I've never been in a better position to win at Anfield apart from this look at our two centre-backs they're not there Everton will never get a better chance to win at Anfield I really mm -hmm. believe that so they're going to come with everything they've got but I think even without fans the the hoodoo for them could could prove a bit too much but um, Joe Brady going for a 2-0 win obviously we'd, we'd take that 100% Ian going for a 1-0 if we don't keep a clean sheet I'll be upset no DCL for Everton, which is huge. That is massive. Uh, lad. Doyle, no, I we'll think come to you first. I think, I uh, think he's fit. And Alan. Okay. They're both back, I think. Angelotti said in the press conference this morning. I yeah, think, well, that's okay. what I've heard. But... Okay, well, maybe someone can confirm that for us or, or indeed uh, not confirm it in the comments. Um, tough one to predict, Doyle. I mean, I do think we're going to win. I'll say that now. <laughs> this could be but there's something about this kind of energy within the team that I've kind of seen in the last week that makes me quite confident. Or is that maybe thinking a bit too promisingly? You've just got to understand that this league is still going to have the problems that we've had. Simple as that, lads. You can't just, it doesn't just change because we've won a game. The Champions League was different for us in the sense that it's a new champ, it's a new competition, it's a different challenge, it's a fresh start in that way. Not that the, all the problems are gone, so when we go back to the league, it's just going to be winning it ways again. It's not going to be like that, lads. It's simple as that, really. we just got to play on the day in the Champions League. We are going to have to just show our quality tomorrow, lads. That's what that's what it comes down to. We've got Mo Salah and we've got Manny. They have to show their quality like they did the other night. And then the other lads just have to keep a stable show. Simple as that, really. I can see Pickford making mistakes, lad. He always, he's got... I, I don't <laughs> think he's awful, lad, but he does make mistakes, that kid, lad. He makes He's a got lot of them, lads. Small hands there, doesn't he? That's <laughs> it's one of them, lads. Um, he just he's, he's gonna mistake or two in him, and I just see the boys scoring goals, especially Manny now that he's got that goal. I'm hoping that he might just kick on now. Yeah, I believe so as well. Um, before we get into a lineup prediction, I'm actually uh, watching this game on Don Robbie's live watch along tomorrow with Speedo Mick, the Everton fan. Um, Is he the one with Jay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing a live watch along with him tomorrow in the studio with Don Robbie. So um, I'm going to try and, you know, obviously I, 
Do you think I'd want to be on camera if we were losing at home, Thurston? That'd be no, heavy, no. Dad. I'm going to risk it anyway. I think there could be worry. some incredible scenes if we score a last minute winner and I'm in his face and could kick off, to be honest. There's beers there as well, so it could get funny. Lol. Um, so, uh, at five o'clock tomorrow, log into Don Robbie's new YouTube channel and you can see me and Speedo Mick. We're going to be half an hour after the game, but then I'm coming back here straight away to do individual. We're changing it up this week, guys. From post-match reaction show, we're changing it up to individual fan cams this week with each person for about four minutes each. Changing it up. We're going to trial something new. So that's to come at the weekend. But anyway, back to this. Finn, give me a team prediction, fellow, and we'll, we'll chip in as well. I'm, I'm quite confident. You're not even there. Yeah, I am quite confident for tomorrow. I feel like for me, with the Leipzig result, that went good. We played so well as a proper controlling game. So I feel like that was a proper, like, Decision making in my head, especially to see if we would have bottled that or oh, yeah. not got the results. Um, on <laughs> against Leipzig in midweek, I would have been less confident, but we played so well, probably Liverpool less performance, and I am very confident for tomorrow. Um, the team I'd put out, obviously, rumours around that Allison wasn't in training, but he's fine, he's available. Um, so I'd go Allison, Trent, Kabak, Henderson, Robertson, the back line against Leipzig. Midfield three, Thiago, Wijnaldum, Jones, and then the front three, Mane, Salah, and Firmino, the exact team. That played in for Leipzig, I feel like everyone on the pitch for Leipzig was a 10 out of 10 performance, all worked yeah. hard, all very determined. And I think we, we said, didn't we, after Leicester in the preview of the Leipzig game, that we just felt that sort of change in the club. Salah came out and put that post on Twitter. It just is about around the feeling you said before, Alex, that there's a proper feel around the club and like it just feels like the club are back together, they're strong. And I feel like for me tomorrow, I'd love to give these a proper Tonkin tomorrow, but it's going to be tough. But I'm going to say 2 0. I, I clean sheet as well because I feel like how controlling we were against Leipzig. I just hope you can bring that into tomorrow's game and just control the game. When they have chances, defend properly like a unit and a team. And when we're doing the attacking side, make sure we a clinical and a proper Liverpool champion performance. I'd love to see tomorrow. And Fingers crossed we can, and Everson obviously got two big boys back, but I think that won't be enough for them. And yeah, keeping not letting them win for Anfield for another 50 years, I hope. But yeah, I'll go 2 0. And the team of things, Leipzig. Love that. Um, yeah, I think that's tough to, to disagree with. Obviously, Milner started that game, so Thiago, I'm guessing, would, would come in for him straight swap in the midfield there. Yeah. Is he, is yeah. he back? No, no, nah, Milner's he was out winning no. against Leicester. That team is one that started against Leipzig win on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. The, the same yeah, team I mean, um, I, I can't change anybody. Same, I had yeah. the exact same, same team. team. Then, Ian um, Francis no uh, goes with uh, Nat Phillips and Kabak at the back with Ginny, Hendo and Jones. Not the, the Derby. And maybe try yeah. that at some point. Maybe try that at yeah. some point. Yeah, yeah. actually, maybe yeah, try that. I'd agree with that, but not not tomorrow. It's too big. Yeah, too big. Too, yeah, I yeah. mean, the try thing it is, you find you. try it in a away game where you know yeah. we we're, we're it probably gonna win anything. it. Yeah, and mm. you can then put yeah. you can put Hendo in midfield in the number yeah. six role, and he can cover them anyway. Like I can't remember yeah. you saying that through the week, but someone was saying that. Try it in a less yeah. important Sorry. game. Yeah, because we're out think, the, we're like normally we'd have to win every single game now because of what we've been through the other couple of weeks. We don't have to win every game. So as Doyle said, go to an away game, we have a, like West Brom away, just risk it. We get battered, we get beat, yeah. we make mistakes, we make mistakes. Like for us we're in this point now, we don't have to win every game, so it's fine if we slip up or and if happens obviously life. we, we uh, don't we don't want to see it obviously, but you, you can mm -hmm. be that risk nowadays, which is good, which I do yeah, like, I but you can not risk it now. If you go with this midfield that Ian said without Thiago in, I, would, I wouldn't I would like that, only because when Thiago played against Everton away, he absolutely he ran the yeah. show. He, he fucking bought. ruined everyone on the pitch that day. And obviously, Richarlison okay. ruined him in the end and was out for three months. So I do think he's got Everton's kind of... Yeah. He knows what to do against Everton. And that's why I'd stick him in, I think. You don't buy Thiago. Game and maybe. On the bench, it's almost a perfect game to, to start his Liverpool yeah, career. Do you is. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Not like, goal goal tomorrow. Here, but like get a goal, get an assist, yeah. get I his revenge. Really hope, I just really wanted the fans to be in for this. Imagine Thiago in front of the cop. Jesus, man. <laughs> it's still so long away. But score predictions quickly, lads. I mean, it's going to be a tough afternoon for Jamie Lane. His two brothers are blues. So we can not have a lot of My big stake. brother's a blue oh, as well. Oh, is he? Yeah, lad. Is he? I'm on. Heavy, bro. I didn't even know that. And your best, our best mate is as well. Josh. Heavy, lad. 
Uh, Joe Brady saying, it depends how we uh, treat the game. Prudon going for nil-nil. And Dicko saying, we need to rattle into these. Um, this is the one and, game I don't uh, mind Thiago getting booked. This is a this is a revenge game, yeah. I'd say I wouldn't mind him getting, but fucking get into them. Um, but score predictions? 2-0. Two two there you go. Let's go on to the next game. Another big one in the Premier League. This one, West Ham Tottenham. Derby. Now, West Ham, obviously a London derby, of course. West Ham, obviously, uh, we're their only defeat in the last five games. We went there and gave them a slumping, but they picked their form straight back up after that with a win in the last game. 42 points, the same as Chelsea after 24 games. Got pretty much identical record to Chelsea now. And they're two points... Sorry, I've had a couple of beers. And they're two points uh, clear of us now as well. So we can't really treat West Ham as a, a non-competitor because they're right up there with us now, more than halfway through the season. Um, this one, Tottenham, uh, where are they? Wow. Uh, back in ninth, lost their last three games, wow. four men in five. Seven defeats, ninth with 36 points. How do we see this one, Bo? It, um, it looks like an interesting game. West Ham have been playing good football. Tottenham have always got goals in them. I'm actually looking forward to this one. What time is it at again, lads? It's at 7 something. Uh, 7.15. Yeah, it's the evening game as well. I like the, the evening games. always seems to have a different type of atmosphere because it's dark. It's like, you know, Saturday night. I don't know why. The energy just feels different. Oh, no, Saturday hang on, night. hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I apologise. It's on Sunday at midday, this fixture. Oh, you see, mm. that changes everything. Like, I, oh, I, yeah. genuinely, I genuinely believe it does. I think the times you play does change. Yeah, does. Well, Liverpool don't like energy. playing at half 12. Well, Klopp doesn't like it a lot, but, you know, it's one of them, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, see, this being an interesting game. I'm actually looking forward to it. I feel like it'll be one of them. Um, West Ham will be attacking and Tottenham will be counter attacking. It'll be that type of game, and whoever can score more goals, like Michael Owen, or Michael Owen would say. Uh, yeah, I mean, mm. obviously, if you score obviously. more goals, you win the game most of the time. Mm. So, yeah, man, time. Listen, if you don't score goals, you don't win games. Oh, so, yeah. That's what they say. So, yeah, man, listen, me and Emil scored loads, loads <laughs> of goals loads. together. So, yeah, man, it's great, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll always do the Michael Owen when he pops up. Um, big up to him, actually, for his new. Uh, denim Mick on jeans. denim collection, Muck jeans, yeah. Muck jeans, um, la. You can buy a denim jacket that says Legends on Legends Owen 10 on the back of a denim jacket. Yeah, I mean, you Has can get a the jacket now. I mean, I've, I've done whiskey, I've done sort of property in Dubai, I've done cereal, sporties. Now I'm kind of Sporty. branching out into the denim world. So, yeah, I mean, bigger meal, they look great in a jacket. I'll get them 20% off, little swipe up thing. So, Great, really. Uh -huh. Go and buy it now. But, yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a sausage. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I got taken away there. Um, right, I'm going for... I'm going for a 2-1 West Ham win, you know. And Tottenham, although, they yes, they, they won convincingly in the Europa League. They played poor in that game. I watched it, and they were poor in that game. Bale, especially in the second half, good first half. But he's just so demotivated now to even work hard because he knows that realistically, Kane and Son, even you look at someone like Vinicius is more likely to come on at the minute. Lamella as well than Bale, Doyle. I mean, what would you do if you were Bale right now? In the I know, lad. He lost his love for football a long time ago. He only likes playing for Wales and that's it, lad. It's one of them type of things. I think Real Madrid have just drained the life out of him to the point where he just doesn't have... Remember when he left, lad? That player that left was incredible. Like it, mm. he was, he was truly incredible. So it's a shame, like it's a real, real shame, like, but it happens. It happens to a lot of good players. They just lose the passion or they just stop playing or for whatever reason, lads. But I feel like this one was quite a uh, quite a weird one, weren't it? Bale's just lost his mojo because of Madrid, lads. This is this is a, this is a um, for me. This is a warning to all of them players that just want to go to Real Madrid because they feel like that's yeah, the best team I in the agree. world. Because I if agree. he would have stayed at Tottenham, lads, he would have ended up at a Champions League final anyway, and he would have been around a lot of better players. He could have done and made a difference against those lads. Well, no, but, listen. It, at the start, he was killing it and he was winning Champions League, scoring in finals. It was only the second half of his Real Madrid career that it tailed off. But I actually is going to stick up for him. I think it's less of a case of him losing his mojo and more a case of he just hasn't been picked to play. Like, he can't help that. 
I guarantee if he played all the games that he missed in, we'd still be talking about Gareth Bale as a top five player in the world. Now, probably. At this, at this rate, he's probably not even in the top 50. To be honest yeah, because he hasn't been able to develop as as he as he would have been able to play, play regularly. To play exactly because you know Same for Real Madrid. Him. So I actually stick up for him a little bit there because you know he's there is still an unreal player there and he's a, and he's still fit. He is still fit. I don't care what anyone says. He's still a, a built athlete. So yeah. it's a tough one. I think he has to go somewhere where he's going to get played. If you were him, Finn, somewhere like PSG. Oof, yeah, it's not about trousers, is it? I know, but I think, yeah, I, think, I agree with you, Alex. I think for me, he's still got everything. He's still got loads of time left in his football and career. And I feel like for me, I think it doesn't matter the way Tottenham play as well. They obviously like to defend. And I feel like Jose just doesn't think he's the right man for the job. Like you see Son and Bergwijn. They do work very hard defensively. And we know Bale isn't that type of player that would sprint back. He probably would, but if you in their style, they do like to sit back a lot. So, I can't see him being concentrated for ninety for seventy five ninety minutes, um, constantly defending when he needs to. And but for me, if if I was Spurs and they, again they're not going to win anything this season, and well, not going to do anything in the league really. So just I don't know why just play him. You've got nothing to lose. A bit like goes with the centre offs. Obviously not in big games. Maybe not in this game on Sunday. But there's nothing to lose with him. He's a great player. Still got all the uh, capability and his goal. Um, was it last night? A very good goal, a great finish, mm, and he just well, shows he still has it. He's a great talent, and for me, for Spurs, I just play him. I think him, Son, and Kane can be one of the best front three in Europe if they got if they all that, get going. Well, was, if Kane could supply said, Bale joined, like he can with Son, yeah, I know everyone was saying the new front three, and if they can somehow get them working together, get Bale maybe defending, want, wanting to play for the club a bit again and just proper mm. have a desire, I think they'll be really good and be unstoppable with that front three and then just work on the defence. But he's a great player and to have them as a front three, you'd think on paper, that sounds like a very, very good front three. But for me, I think he keep working hard and I think if he gets in the team, he just needs to show what he's capable of. Like last night, that could be, look, he could be, that's a shout to Josie going, look what I can do because it was a great finish. But yeah. I, well, them three as a front yeah. three is very deadly. Very, very whatever deadly. reason, boys, professional managers don't start them. That, that mm. for whatever reason it is, we all can maybe sit on behind the scenes. We don't know. Mm. We have no idea. Like he's a great player, and we see him do it for Wales all the time. Lad, we've seen him do it when he was younger. That mad goal that he scored, but he's just just one of them. And it lads, it's a shame. Yeah, just a shame. Like, Two comments on that. He's thirty-one now, I think. Maybe so thirty-two. He's not done, like, definitely not done. Like, no, definitely not. not. He's not definitely done. got. Yeah, he's thirty-one. And like I said, 31. the way that he's built and the way that he's trained, big lads. He's yeah, he's big, he's strong lads. Play at a good level, unless you know he gets a bad injury. But he can play at a great level, I think, until he's at least 37, 38. Yeah, you can see uh, him at Wales, can't you? Yeah? As the captain or but, something. But then when he's again, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do, but club football, like you said. He'd probably like retire from club football, but just turn up for for Wales when he's thirty eight because he'll just be That's playing funny. golf and he'll turn up for the international game. But That's anyway, um, he's on six hundred k a week, so that's great. Uh, let's what? get into the next game what? Sunday at midday. Sorry, two o'clock. Uh, Aston game. Villa Leicester. This will be a really good game. Grealish versus uh, Foden. Sorry, Grealish versus uh, Madison. Uh, Sunday two o five. This one. Um, and if we look at the table, I mean, Aston Villa, 8th place, 36, uh, two wins in five. <clears throat> Jesus, sorry. Um, and then we've got Leicester, who are again in third place, sitting pretty. Only one win in the last three, but they'll be hoping to uh, to nick an away win. Aston, though they have been so good, obviously they've slapped us up, which hmm. is the worst you know, defeat we've ever had, to be honest. But they have been really inconsistent, Doyle. Do you think yeah, Leicester, think they've been great. and they've been inconsistent as well. I mean, they have been great, but then they just lost at home recently to I know. Brighton or someone. They but lost no, at home. they're overachieving, lads. That's the way I see Aston Villa right now. That's what they're doing, yeah. overachieving, lads. They've done really well to come back to the Premier League and then establish themselves. That's what they're doing right now. Great. I like seeing them play football. Sometimes they're going to slip up because they're not always going to get it right. But I think, yeah. good on them, lads. Wherever they are right now is a bonus. Jack Grealish is one of the best players in the in the league at the moment. Hey, great for them, lads. It, whatever this result is, again, still great for them. I think Leicester are the ones that, like, you know, you'd ex- we are expecting a lot from them, and they do deliver a lot as well, but they do, like I've always said this, they flap, lads. Leicester are a flappy team, yeah. lads. They just are, bro. I think they're a great team. Yeah. They play great football. They do. They play boss football. But um, any, they just 
they just flap when it comes to the moments, and I, I can't explain it. They're, like, they're a bit like Tottenham in that sense. Uh, 2 1 Villa. 2 1 the Villa. I'm actually going to say 2 2 on this one. Finn, what have you got? Yeah, 2 2 as well. I think Villa two, two. are doing so well. And considering like, you think both of these went down to the last game of the season, didn't they? And they had to get a point, and then they had to like, yeah. get what for the ball once they get beat, and they did. And that was like mad. Like Villa were like so not bad. They weren't awful, but they weren't good at all. Like they were just scraping wins out, last minute winners and stuff like that. And now they're like really good. And they, they had a great spell. Obviously, they've lost the odd couple, Burnley and West Ham at home. But yeah, as yeah. I said, they're a great team and they're over. They're doing everything that even better than they should be doing. And for them, like they can go into every game and there's no pressure on them. They don't have to win the game if they lose it. It's fair enough. Obviously, the fans don't like it, but there's no like lot of pressure on them. So they can just play whatever football they want. And they've got a great back line. They've made the, the signers they've brought in as well have been great business by them. Traore, who was a bit iffy starting off, he's been boss, yeah, Barkley, Watkins, Cash, Martinez yeah, has been the indeed. best keeper in the league this season. They've like they've done so well to considering you were like a point off getting relegated to now fighting fighting for Europe, doing better than Arsenal, Spurs. Yeah. Sometimes like they, they've done so well to do what they've done and especially the way how low and how bad they were and they just scraped through the teeth from going down and now they're like doing yeah. better than expected, which is great to see. And but yeah, I'm gonna go two two because like Leicester are the big win against us obviously, which is a shame and a bit fluky, but yeah, Leicester always in the boss. Like I reckon in two weeks we could see Leicester drop down to like fifth, sixth. And I don't know why. I just feel like we can. I just feel like we just don't have the consistency. And fair enough, they have had a lot of injuries. But yeah, but I'm I'm pleased with Villa. I don't mind them. They're a great team and got some great fans. And yeah, they've yeah, done so well. I but I'm gonna go two two because I feel like the recent form at home has been quite a bit shaky. So I'll go two two with you. Yeah, I actually um I I like that score prediction. I actually got my head almost kicked in at Aston Villa. <laughs> for a Liverpool game, I was sitting in the whole end and celebrated when Gerrard scored a penalty. What are you doing with the You should be in the next <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry, guys. Um, so, yeah, that was fun. Let's get into this one. Arsenal, Man City. This is going to be an interesting game. Or is it, though? No. 18 mm. wins in a row now for Man yeah. City. And City's Arsenal, just going to win. 10th yeah. place. They won their last one, but only one win in... Sorry, two in five. Maybe picking up some form. 34 points, 10 wins. 10 losses for Arsenal. Quickly, uh, we'll get through this last one. Doyle, score prediction for this one. Arsenal at home to City. City 3. I, I, I don't even see Arsenal scoring, but I'll say 1-3-1 one, one to yeah, City. 3-1 City. One. I actually think you could be very close there. Um, they've got a great record when they've been to the Emirates, to be honest with you, mm. in the last four or five years. City had a 4-0. They are unstoppable. They are the force they, that everybody else is trying to keep up with. Doing what we did at the start of last season, basically. This is exactly what happened. I think we won 27 of our first 28 games. So if they can match that, which they haven't, <laughs> to be honest, because they won't get the points that we got last season, I'm pretty sure of that. Only because they've, they've, they've done it already. They've done it, I know, but, Yeah, I know. They've got their 100 points. But when we started climbing last season... In the first 28 games, won 27. They've played 24, lost uh, two and drawn five. So That's the worst thing. Even this season, we it's not their best season. Last season. Yeah, yeah, it's still not their best still season, but with everyone else, it's just crap, lads. It's consistency. Yeah, that's why they're yeah. doing so good. It's like Every game, they go in and they win it. and like They've won like 17 on the balance, which no other team has managed to like five wins on the balance. I don't think like, the they're the only team that has kept consistency since... like. November, they had it issues to play. start, and yeah, they like be like eight foot one point, and then next minute they're like top of the league by yeah, ten points, and it can be like thirteen. It's like they're so but consistent, still, and like it's we really can do a run like that though. We, I'm confident. Yeah, we, we can. can. We, we have the like players, you have the mentality, we, we have everything. Need, but we're just now relying on them to slip up. And yeah. But they, oh, they they've are, well won it. Yeah, they've won it. They're not slipping up. won the league. No one is. The only time they get beat is when. Like they put a weak team out against like West Brom away yeah. or something or something stupid like that. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. Games, lad. They have to lose yeah. like yeah. six games. That's never. And they played. Bro. Yeah, they, they and one of us would and one of them wins. You would have thought of deals, but we've bottled our chance to yeah. get something back on them. But Game they're well gone then. The league, so like. Yeah, convincing City wins all round then, and that rounds up top to bottom this week. Let us know in the comments if you've enjoyed it. He's been Doyle. He's been Finn on the Welford TV. Um, their links to their channels are in the description and uh, you will next catch me 
on Don Robbie's channel, four o'clock, sorry, five o'clock tomorrow. And then I'll be back on here straight after that is finished to do the fan cams with you guys. So Doyle, Welford, have a great night. Hey, Sean, I'll you later. Fucking get in there. <laughs> and not win this.